Hello and welcome to the second episode of my Raspberry Pi robot series. As you are seeing, by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to make your robot avoid obstacles using its set of distance sensors. In the last video, we covered basic wireless motor control, and this tutorial will build upon that. If you haven't watched episode 1, then you can find a link to it below. As usual, we have two objectives today. Number one, to understand an obstacle avoiding Python program. And number two, to actually get our robot to avoid obstacles by itself. Here is what you'll need in this tutorial. The list of equipment that you will require is exactly the same as in episode one, but I'll just run through it quickly. As I'm sure you are aware, we're going to be using the pi to go Lite from Fortronics as our basic robot kit. So you will of course need one of those. If you don't have one, then check out both Fortronics' website and my previous videos in the description below. Make sure your pi to go Lite is fully constructed and ready to use. Next, you will need a Raspberry Pi of any sort. All of the models are compatible with the pi to go Lite. For the sake of continuity, I will be using the recently price cut Model B+, but all of the instructions in this video will work no matter what Pi you are using. This series is fully compatible with Pi 2 also. Don't forget to make sure you have Raspbian installed. After that, you'll need batteries to power your robot. As I've said before, I recommend using rechargeables, such as these Panasonic AnyLoops. Don't forget that we'll also be using a Wi-Fi dongle to connect remotely to our robot. If you have not set up Wi-Fi on your Pi, watch episode 1 where I show you how to do just that. Also, make sure you have a computer on standby in order to SSH into your Pi. Again, this was all covered in episode 1. I'll be using a Windows 7 desktop, but everything is cross-compatible. It is worth noting that these videos will also work if you have your Pi directly plugged into a monitor. However, running a robot without wires is significantly easier. Now let's actually get going. First, make sure you have your robot set up correctly. Ensure your Raspberry Pi is connected with all of the GPIO pins firmly in place. Then make sure your SD card, batteries and Wi-Fi dongle are all plugged in. After that, flick the switch and you should see your pi to go power up. As shown in episode 1, your pi to go will connect automatically to your network, and so jump on your other computer and remotely access it. This was also covered in the previous instalment. With everything set up, we can now get on to making our robot avoid obstacles. So now you should be able to type commands into your Raspberry Pi. First things first, sign in, and then if you followed episode 1, you should be able to find the folder where all of the robot software is stored. So if I type ls right now and hit enter, it will list the contents of this directory. You'll see the familiar robot folder we installed last time. Change direction to that with the command cd robot and then hit enter. Now after that, just like last time, if I type ls, you'll see another folder called pi to go Before we can access the code, quickly change into that directory with the command cd pi to go and then hit enter. Now if I list the contents, you will see all of the programs that you saw in episode 1. Before we can proceed any further, we will all need to update this directory. By updating it, you'll be able to grab the new program from the internet. Some of you may have noticed that I already have this new program. It is called avoider.py. In order for your robot software to look like my one, you'll need to type the following command, git pull, and then hit enter. This simply pulls the latest additions from GitHub, the service I'm using to distribute code. When you do this, you'll see the new program being downloaded. If I do it, it simply tells me that all of my software is already up to date. After that is finished downloading, if you type ls, you'll notice that a new program, just like my one, has appeared, avoider.py. As I've said before, this is the code we will be running today. Before we get it going, let's take a quick look at how it works. I shall be opening it using the text editor nano with the command nano avoider.py. First off, you can see that I've commented the code profusely in order to help you when you come to edit it. Let's take a look at the first couple of lines. This line here is the first line of the program, and it simply imports the necessary libraries that we'll be using to enable our robot to move around as we want it to. Next, this line here simply gets the pi go library going by initializing it. After that, I've set a variable to define the speed at which I'd like my robot to move around. This value is out of 100 and by default is set to 40. Feel free to play around with it though. Moving down, you'll see the main body of code. There are a lot of while loops and if statements to get your head around, but before we delve straight into understanding that, first it is important to know how your robot is actually going to avoid obstacles. 
the Pytogo light has three distance sensors, two infrared ones and an ultrasonic distance sensor on the front. We're going to be using all of them. Let's take a look at those infrared distance sensors, the ones positioned at slight angles. These are simpler than the ultrasonic distance sensor in the front and can only provide what is known as a binary output. That means they can detect whether something is near or not near, true or false. The sensors use infrared light and work on a threshold. As I just said, if something has passed the threshold, aka it is near, then the sensor will be triggered. You must note, however, that for these to work efficiently, the room cannot be too bright, as this can confuse the sensors due to increased infrared levels from light bulbs and windows, etc. The ultrasonic distance sensor is this guy here. It is substantially larger than the infrared ones, and that is because it's more intelligent. It uses ultrasonic sound instead of infrared light and works like sonar. The sensor will fire off a pulse and depending on how fast it bounces off of something, it will be able to read a distance. This means that the ultrasonic distance sensor is an analog one. It is not binary like the infrared distance sensors as it can tell you exactly how far away something is. The range of our robot's ultrasonic distance sensor is around a couple of meters. Now let's move back to our code. We will use both types of distance sensor in our program. The infrared sensors will detect if anything is in the way at the side, and the ultrasonic distance sensor will detect if anything is directly in front of our robot. Now the first chunk of the while loop, this part here, tells the robot that if anything is detected on the left infrared sensor, then it should move in the opposite direction, right, until it is gone. The next chunk does exactly the same but in reverse i.e. if anything is detected on the right infrared sensor, then move in the other direction, left. The final chunk of code is for the ultrasonic distance sensor. Broken down, it simply says, if nothing is detected by either of the infrared distance sensors, find out the front distance using the ultrasonic sensor. If it is less than the threshold, which I've put as 0.3 and you can edit, it means that the robot is going to collide. The next part of the code tells the Pi to go to spin right and continue going, hopefully avoiding that obstacle. This else statement here means that if nothing is detected, keep going forward. The last part of the program simply cleans up the code when we want to end it. And that's it. If you don't understand any parts of this code, then do not worry. Just go through it slowly and you'll soon get your head around it. Now let's run the program and make our robot avoid obstacles. Now place your robot down in an environment where it will need to avoid things. Then simply type in sudo python avoider.py and hit enter. Immediately, you should see your pi to go light spring to life and start to avoid whatever is near. If you notice any sporadic results straight away, then check that your room isn't too bright. You may also notice that this isn't perfect. Your robot may get stuck. This is because we can't detect obstacles all around this particular robot. In order to stop your Pi to go moving, hit Ctrl C on your keyboard and this will kill the program. And so concludes the second episode of my Raspberry Pi robot series. In this episode you've learned how to make a robot avoid obstacles. In the next tutorial I'll show you how to make it follow a line. As an extension to this video, why don't you edit how fast your robot moves around? Make sure that you subscribe, like and share and until next time, bye!